Hi there friends and happy Sabbath. It's wonderful to have you with us here right now. It's been wonderful seeing most of you on Zoom uh, for Sabbath school and also for our Thursday night prayer meeting and our Wednesday night catch up. Uh, if you're, you're not meeting with us on Zoom, make sure you sign up for the newsletter on our website mastertonsda.nz and we'll be sure to send you all the links and, and updates that you need to stay in touch. Let's just open with a word of prayer uh, before we get stuck into the message today. Heavenly Father, we just ask for your guidance right now uh, as we open your word. We ask please uh, for the Holy Spirit to guide us, uh, to convict us where we need convicting, our Lord to encourage us where we need encouragement. Lord, let your words be on my lips and, and not my own. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. As we watch the news and, and look at what's happening in the world around us, we can't help but see some of those signs uh, that we were told would appear before the soon coming of Jesus. As Jesus described them like labour pains, steadily and surely increasing in frequency and severity. I'm not just talking about the pandemic, or, although obviously... Uh, that is significant right now. Aside from disease, Jesus also spoke of wars and rumours of wars, distress of nation, rampant fear, earthquakes and famine. I was just reading this morning that the UN says that famines of biblical proportion loom on the horizon, with a predicted 300,000 people starving to death each day over a three-month period. And this doesn't include the increase of starvation due to COVID-19 which is putting an additional 130 million people on the edge of starvation. Perhaps even more noticeable, as you look around the world, is the advantage this world takes of the poor. James 5 talks about those who have heaped up treasure in the last day, days, having held back the wages from the poor. Perhaps most noticeable to me right now is what Jesus said in Matthew 24, 12. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. Here in New Zealand, uh, just a few short months ago, we've legalised abortion up to birth for essentially any reason. Um, to me, it is a perfect fulfilment of that sign. Paul wrote in his second letter to Timothy that one of the things that would characterise the last days would be people having a form of godliness but denying its power. A fake Christianity, if you will. Pat Perhaps I need to do a sermon on the signs of the times, but you can see how our minds can be directed to end time events right now. Your mind at this stage may go to topics such as the mark of the beast or plagues, uh, perhaps the time of trouble. And these are very important topics to know about uh, that we should all make a good study of. But I want to put to you what is more important is what needs to happen in us before Jesus returns. The first thing that needs to happen in us is we need to have a commitment to knowing Jesus and growing our relationship with him. If you haven't already listened to my message from a couple of weeks ago, I encourage you to do so. I'll put a link in the description. We looked at building a close relationship with God. How do we do that? Quality and quantity time in prayer and Bible study. You know, it's always been important but given the times that we are living in, it is vitally important that we have a good understanding of God and his character. 1 John 4.8 tells us, He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. John 17.3 tells us, And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. And of course, that verse, which is a great one to memorize, Jeremiah 31, 3. The Lord hath appeared of old to me, saying, Yea, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn you. We need to understand what God is love means. You see, in the love chapter, 1 Corinthians 13, in verse 5 it says, Love does not seek its own. That means that God is focused totally outwards. He is more concerned about us than he is about himself, especially our salvation. We see that especially with Jesus on the cross. 
he prays to his father to forgive the very ones who are hammering the nails through his hands. He takes upon himself your sins and mine and those of the whole world since the time of Adam and Eve to the very end and dies the death that we, sinners, should die. Why is it important that we understand his character and be in a close relationship with God, especially now? Let's go through that list we made last time and you tell me if these things are especially important for those living just before Jesus returns. Let's have a look. Romans 6.11 says, Reckon yourselves to be dead indeed to sin, but alive to God and Christ Jesus our Lord, that is in a relationship with Christ. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Dead to sin, but alive to God and given eternal life. Is that important right now? Of course it is. Let's go on. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he, that is God the Father, made him who knew no sin, Jesus, to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him, that is, in a relationship with him. How about that? Given the righteousness of God, do we need that right now? Of course. Let's carry on. Romans 8.1 there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. How about that? Or would you like to not be condemned? Is that important right now as we live so close to Christ's return? 1 Corinthians 1-2 To the church of God which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus, that is, in a relationship with Christ, called to be saints, with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. We sanctify, made holy, and called to be saints. That sounds like a message for us right now, doesn't it? 1 Corinthians fifteen twenty two. For as in Adam all die, even so, in Christ... That is, you're in a relationship with Christ. All shall be made alive. To be resurrected. Oh, that's especially important, isn't it, at any time. 2 Corinthians 5.17 Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, again in a relationship with him, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Uh, would you like to be a new creation? Of course. Galatians 3.28 There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Uh, do we need to be united together right now? Uh, with all that's happening in the world as a church, do we need to be drawn together? Of course we do. Ephesians 1.3 Blessed be the God and Father of of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, that is in a relationship with Him. How does that sound? To be blessed with every spiritual blessing. Uh, that's a promise that I would like to take advantage of. Colossians 1.28 Him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. When we're in a relationship with Christ, we are presented perfect. 2 Corinthians 2.14 Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. Would you like to always be led in triumph? Uh, that sounds like God's people at the end of time especially. John 15.5 I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me that stays in a relationship with him and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. Do you want to be a bearer of much fruit? Let's have a look at some of that fruit. Galatians 5.22 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. Second thing that needs to happen, I believe needs to happen, is we need to put away 
habitual sin. This is my second point. A large proportion of the people who contact me online do so because they are continually struggling with a particular sin. Normally, it's watching something they know they shouldn't be. Now, struggling is better than feeling nothing, but victory is freely available. Nobody need be an addict to anything, for God is able to do everything that is needed to transform us. And remember, God wants to save you. He wants to forgive you. But most of all, He wants to change you into His image, as He designed you to be. Don't give up on God. He is able to do so much more than you think. Why does this need to happen before Jesus comes again? Well, it's certainly not to earn our salvation, nor is it to earn God's love. After all, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But amongst other reasons, it needs to happen so that we can experience the full power of God to change us. Remember that verse from the beginning? 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 to 5. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. I don't want to be in that group. How about you? So how do we experience the full power of God? Well, the first step is point number one again. Commit to knowing Jesus and growing your relationship with him. Remember those benefits we talked about of having a close relationship with God? One of the many benefits is that God sanctifies us. He makes us holy. If you want to be transformed, freed from any and all addictions, you have to die daily to self, which means that you have to turn your entire life over to him, daily, hourly, every second if you have to. He then works in and through you to wipe out the addiction. This statement is not just theory, but it's a proven fact. Of course, that is the beginning and is a sermon unto itself. If you'd like more information on overcoming sin, please contact us at the church via Facebook, YouTube, or our website, mastertonsda.nz, or email church at mastertonsda.nz. The third thing that needs to happen is you need to get involved in God's work. The satisfaction of working alongside God to bring someone to salvation is unparalleled. If you are looking for meaning and purpose in your life, labor with God for others. My next sermon will be on sharing with others. But I'll tell you now, the key is point number one again, knowing Jesus and growing your relationship with him. Why is that key? Because so many people in the world have a warped idea of God and who he is. And it is our job to point them to the God of the Bible. A God who is righteous, patient, forgiving, abiding, merciful and gracious. A God who is love. Friends, this world, this life, will very soon pass away. The honour and the praise of the world is all vanity. I want honour that is lasting, honour that is immortal, honour that will never perish. How about you? Are you focusing too much on what is happening in the world and not enough on what God can do through you and in you right now? Let's commit ourselves to God and His work right now as we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful that you draw us close to you. We are grateful that you want us to know you closely. Lord, we want to be transformed by you. We want to turn our whole lives over to you. Lord, we want to work alongside you. We want to to be a part of the great work of the gospel going to the world before you return. We long to see your return and long to be with you face to face. We ask, please, for you to draw us closer to you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.